One thing that I hate when playing from the couch is having to use anything that's not my gamepad. And sometimes that limits me with the odd game that requires a mouse or keyboard. Occasionally it is justified, but there are quite a lot of games that should work absolutely fine on a gamepad. Is there a way around it? Well, with a bit of research, I found a method to customize controls and stream them through Moonlight, which I think works quite well and is not overly complicated. Let's take a look at how to do this. So, for customizing the controls, we are going to need a free app called Antimicrox. It's not a very famous software, but I'm not claiming to be discovering anything here. And this video isn't the first one about the software. Now, how to stream this solution is something I haven't seen at all, and it can get tricky. So let me outline our plans. First, we'll use Antimicrox to customize our controls for our required games and create profiles for them. Then, we will configure the auto profiler inside Antimicrox so that the custom controls kick in whenever we launch those games. Finally, we will create a batch file that executes everything so that we can use that as our streamed app from Sunshine to Moonlight. That's the main idea. So let's get started as we have quite some stuff to get through. As far as which games to use, it's not that relevant, but for my specific case, I've picked two games that only work on mouse and keyboard and don't accept gamepad input. One of them is Invisible Ink, which is a nice game that should definitely accept a gamepad, as there's a PS4 version of the game which uses it. But believe it or not, the PC version doesn't support it. A bad decision from the devs which we are going to fix right now. You might argue, why should we do this with an external app if Steam allows you to customize controls? Well, because this method will let us do this with any app coming from anywhere. Apps from GOG, isolated apps with no launchers, etc. In fact, the other game I'm going to configure is a pretty unknown one called Remnants of the Precursors, which is basically a modern remake of a classic turn-based game called Masters of Orion. This game is an indie effort, and free by the way, and only works on the mouse. So let's get into it. First of all, let's go into the GitHub page for Antimicrox and download the most recent version for it, and then install it. After that, when you run it, you will see the screen is not showing much, unless you enable a gamepad. At that point, everything comes to life. Let's jump off for now and decide what we need to do with our controls. If we try Invisible Ink, we'll see we are going to need to replicate not just the mouse directions on both clicks, but also the scrolling wheel. We will also require a bunch of keys, WASD to move the map, plus Q and E to rotate the view, and the space and old keys for other options. And finally, the escape and enter keys too. Fair enough, let's jump into n Microx and start configuring that. We'll use the left analog controller for the WASD keys and the right controller for the mouse. As you can see, there are very handy presets already in there to help us. Some people like to use the triggers for the left and right mouse click, but I prefer just the regular A and V buttons. I will assign the left and right button to Q and E to rotate the screen, and then the rest that I needed. Okay, let's test it. Yes, this seems to work quite well. So let's now save this as a profile inside Antimicrox. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for the other game, Remnants of the Precursors. In this case, it's much more simple, as I really just need all the mouse controls, including the wheel, and then maybe escape and enter, but nothing else. This time, I'm going to use the left controller for the mouse, just to clearly see a different configuration when we jump from one game to the other. And testing it, it works well. So again, remember to save this as a profile inside Antimicrox too. Okay, now we're going to do step two, which is using Auto Profiler inside Antimicrox to automate the use of profiles. You will need to know the exe file that's executed when you run the program, as that will be the signal for Antimicrox to change to the correct profile. Then go into the settings, 
In the general tab, disable the option auto load last open profile, as for me this was fighting the auto profiles. Then jump into auto profile, add a new one, select the profile that you saved and then in the application field, select the exit file that gets executed when you want the profile to load. That's it. Then we'll do the same for any other games that need it. Let's test it locally to see if it works. As you see, currently no profiles are chosen. Now I load the game and there you go, the gamepad works. And if I check the app, indeed, the profile is loaded. Ok, I exit the game. Let's try the other one. And again, I can see the controls working since they were different and indeed the app has loaded the right profile. So yeah, the auto profiles are working and that's the end of our step 2. Now, for step 3 is when things get a little bit tricky. Frankly, I was hoping I could rely on some of the options on Sunshine to load antimicrox right before the game launches. But unfortunately, the command prep is not working properly since it doesn't get a controller input until the stream runs. And if we run it as a detached command, then most of the time antimicrox starts after the game has launched, so the auto profiles don't kick in. So yeah, I couldn't make this work just with Sunshine. But fear not, we can do something else. We are going to create a batch file that will do all of that by itself. Right click on your desktop and create a text file. Then copy the script I'm adding here. This line needs the path in your machine to antimicrox. And this other line needs the path in your machine to the game. The reason we are adding such a long timeout is that antimicrox sometimes seems to take a while to launch and recognize the controller, especially through moonlight. If this happens after the game has launched, then the auto profile will not kick in and we will have to reload it. Ok, now save it as whatever name you want dot bat. For instance, I'm calling it invisible ink dot bat. Windows will warn you about changing the file extension, but it's fine. There you go, your batch file is ready to go. You can test it right away without streaming, just locally. First make sure your gamepad is on and double click the batch file. It should run antimicrox and then a few seconds later launch the game. And then the auto profiler will kick in and you should be good to go to play your game. Perfect. Now right click on your bat file and select copy as path. Then go into Sunshine, create a new app, name it something different. I went with Invisible Ink Custom just to test it. And then use that path you copied as your command and just save it. And we're done. Time to properly test this. I go to my TV, already using my gamepad, run Moonlight and pick Invisible Ink Custom. And if we've done things well, this should work. And indeed it does. Now, as with all these situations, there are a number of little things that can go south. First, I've had a few times when even with the long timeout, Antimicrox was still not kicking in soon enough. My understanding is that it does load earlier, but it takes a while to recognize the controller through moonlight. In those cases, the quick solution was just to jump out of the stream and reload it. And that does it. Another situation that can trip you is that the gamepad you use through moonlight needs to have a similar protocol or compatibility than the one you use to configure antimicrox locally. In my case, both are 8-bit DOS, but they are different models. One is Ultimate and the other is a Pro 2. This works absolutely fine. My Android handheld was also identified by Antimicros as a valid controller without any issues. But I could foresee a situation where people might try some obscure controllers and that might bring issues. That's it. You can create as many controller profiles as you need and add batch files for them to Sunshine. A bit involved, but hopefully you were able to follow me. This is something I investigated for myself, but if you know a better way to do this, by all means, let everyone know in the comments. Especially if you know a way to do this with Sunshine straight away without using batch files. I got really close there, but was never able to make it run, so I went the batch file way. That's all for today, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, feel free to click like and subscribe to the channel. But even if you don't, thanks for watching, and enjoy your gaming in a relaxed, relaxed setting. setting.